In this video, you're going to learn how to use the substitution method to solve a linear system of two equations and two variables. So we're going to go through a couple examples together. Let's dive into this video. So the first thing you want to do when you do the substitution method is you want to solve for one of the variables, either x or y, one of the variables that's easy to get by itself on one side of the equal sign. Now when I look at these two equations, I notice that this one has a coefficient of 2. If I go to try to solve for this x here, I'd eventually have to divide by 2, and that would give me some fractions, which makes it a little bit more difficult. So if you want to make it a little bit easier on yourself, look for a variable where the coefficient in front of that variable is just a 1. So this y here is like 1y. So I would try to isolate this variable as opposed to this one or this one or this one. Okay, so how would we do that? Well, let's go ahead and subtract 2x from both sides of this equation. So we have 2x plus y equals 5. We're going to subtract 2x from both sides to keep that equation balanced. Okay, and we have now y equals 5 minus 2x. Now don't make the mistake, sometimes students will try to combine these and say, oh, that's 5 minus 2, 3x. This is a variable, this is just a number. They're unlike terms, you can't combine them. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, y is equal to 5 minus 2x. What do I do with that quantity? Well, since y equals 5 minus 2x, let's substitute it into the other equation that we haven't used yet. Now, sometimes students will make the mistake of putting it back into the original equation that they, they were working with here, and you're going to get an incorrect solution here. What you want to do is you want to substitute it into the other equation in place of y. It's kind of like a substitute math teacher. When your math teacher's not there, a sub shows up, right? And so what we're going to do here now is we're going to rewrite this equation, 3x minus... 2, but instead of y, I'm going to put what y equals, this quantity here, 5 minus 2x equals 11. Okay, so now we have one equation with just one variable, x, so we can solve for x. So let's do that. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to distribute, and here's another mistake that sometimes students make, and I want to make sure you don't make that, is when you see a minus, think of that as a negative. So what I'm doing in my mind is I'm capturing this sign with the number. So I think of that as a negative 2 that I'm distributing into the parentheses, okay? Same thing here. See this minus 2x? This is like a negative 2x. So let's go ahead and distribute. We've got negative 2 times 5, which is negative 10. A negative 2 times a negative 2x is a positive 4x. Remember, a negative times a negative is a positive. Let's bring down the 3x, and this equals 11. Okay, so now we've done the distributive property. Let's combine like terms. 3x plus 4x is 7x, minus 10 equals 11. We want to get the variables on one side, numbers on the other, so let's add 10 to both sides. Okay, so now we have 7x is equal to 21, and we just want to solve for 1x, so let's divide both sides by 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1x, 21 divided by 7 is 3, and now we know what x is, how do we solve for y? You can put it back into either of these equations in place for x, or this one here, which might be a little bit easier because we already have y by itself. Any one of the equations, you'll get the same answer. But let's make it easier on ourselves. Let's put it in for x right here. So we have y equals 5 minus 2 times 3. Okay, so this is coming out to 5 minus 6, which is equal to negative 1. And so our final answer is going to be x comma y, 3 comma negative 1. So if we were to graph these two lines, that's the point of intersection where the two lines would cross. If you want to check your answer, and sometimes this is a, a quick and easy thing to do, just go ahead and plug 3 back in for x. We get 2 times 3 is 6, plus y, which is negative 1. That equals 5, so that makes that equation true. If we plug it in over here, we get 3 times 3 is 9. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. 9 plus 2 is 11. It makes that equation true. So you can see this is a good solution. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, let's dive into question number two now. If you're getting the hang of this, try this problem on your own, and we'll go through it together. And while you're doing that, if you like the way that I explain things and you want to learn more about Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 slash College Algebra, I've got a link in the description below to my uh, math courses, so check those out, and uh, that's a good resource for you. Now, if I was going to do this problem, again, I would follow that same strategy of looking for a variable that's easy to isolate, meaning get it by itself on one side of the equation. So in this case, I can see this one's probably going to be the easiest. We just have 1x. So let's go ahead and rearrange this equation here, and we're going to do that 
by adding 3y to both sides. So if I add 3y here to eliminate it on the left, I have to add it to the other side, again, to keep this equation balanced. So we get x equals negative 11 plus 3y. Okay, so now that we know that x is equal to this quantity, let's take this and do our substitution. Now, again, don't make the mistake of substituting into this equation. That's the one that we just rearranged. You're gonna to wanna to take this and substitute it into the equation that we haven't used yet. And when you do a substitution, it's a good idea to put it in parentheses and treat it like a group. So what I mean by that is five times x, since x is this whole quantity, negative 11 plus three y, plus four y equals two. Okay, so now we just have one equation with y's in it. We can solve for y. We're gonna start off by simplifying or doing our distributive property. That gives us negative 55 plus 15y plus 4y is equal to two. Let's combine like terms. 15y plus 4y is 19y minus 55 is equal to two. We wanna get the variables and numbers on opposite sides, so let's go ahead and add 55 to both sides. Keep that equation balanced. We get 19y is equal to 57, and we just wanna solve for one y, so let's divide both sides of our equation by 19. 19 divided by 19 is one y. 57 divided by 19 is three. Okay, now we know what y is equal to. How do we solve for x? Well, again, we can substitute into the first equation, the second equation, or we could use this one right here since we already have x by itself. Any one of those will get the same answer. Let's go ahead and put three in for y. So this is gonna be x equals negative 11 plus three times three. And so that comes out to negative 11 plus three times three is nine. And negative 11 plus nine is negative two. And so our final answer, alphabetical order, x comma y is gonna be negative two comma three. And that's where your two lines would intersect if you graph them. So you, again, you can check your answer by putting it into both equations, make sure it makes them true, that you can verify you got the right solution, and you got it. So the next step is really to learn about the elimination method, and I'll put a video right there. So follow me over to that video, we'll get some more practice doing elimination. I'll see you there.